After September 11th, uh, some of the press, particularly the Wall Street Journal, uh, did do what they should have done. They began uh, investigating uh, opinion in the, in the region to find out why people, uh, they were trying to find out the answer to George Bush's plaintive question, uh, why do they hate us when we're so good? You know, how can that be? Uh, so within, uh, actually, before, even before he asked the question, the Wall Street Journal had provided some of the answers. Uh, they did do what they should have done. They did an investigation of uh, opinions in the region. Now they kept to the people they care about. So they had a, it was what they called moneyed Muslims, meaning bankers, uh, lawyers, uh, managers of branches of U.S. corp transnationals, that kind of people. People are right inside the U.S. system. And of course, naturally despise Osama bin Laden because they're his main targets. Uh, they're the ones he's after, so they don't like him. Uh, and in that group, uh, uh, you can't, uh, uh, what, what's their opinion about the United States? Well, it turns out they're, they're very antagonistic to U.S. policy, uh, though they're in, in the main policies they're just part of, you know, like the international economic policies. But what they, what, what they object to is the fact that the United States has consistently opposed uh, a, a democracy, a independent development, a supporting corrupt, brutal regimes, uh, is uh, the, their naturally strongly opposed to the unilateral U.S. support for the Israeli military occupation, which is very harsh and brutal, it's now in its 35th year, strongly oppose the U.S. sanctions against Iraq, which they understand perfectly well, and you know too, so I won't go into it, are devastating the population, but strengthening Saddam Hussein. And for reasons like that, they say they uh, a lot of hatred of U.S. policies, despite the fact that they're right in the middle of the entire U.S. system. Well, that's one answer to uh, uh, George Bush's question. It's not the kind of answer you read in most of the intellectual journals and the press and so on. There you read sophisticated answers about how people of that region uh, have bad cultures or they are left out by globalization uh, or they, you know, can't stand their freedoms and their magnificence and so on and so forth. Uh, anyone who is seriously concerned with these issues, certainly anyone who's a specialist in international affairs or the Middle East, knows that there's nothing new about these answers. Uh, you can go way back and find them as far back as you want to go. Obvious place to look, if you want to find out more about this, uh, is the records for 1958. President Eisenhower, in an in internal discussion, uh, observed to his staff, his words, that there's a campaign of hatred against us in the Middle East, uh, not by governments, but by the people. Uh, and there was discussion about this. The National Security Council, the highest planning body, uh, gave their analysis. Uh, they said that there is, the reason is that there's a perception in the region that the United States is supporting harsh and brutal and corrupt regimes uh, uh, and is blocking democratization and development and is doing so because of our interest in controlling the oil reserves of the region. And they said it's difficult to counter this perception because it's accurate. <laughs> and not only, is it, not only is it accurate, but it should be accurate. It said it is natural for us to support uh, status quo governments, meaning the kind I just described, uh, and to prevent democracy and development because we want to maintain control over the uh, energy resources of the region. So there's a campaign of hatred against us by the people, uh, and that's the reason for it. Uh, so